All right, Tucker, thank you. Great show. Welcome Good to show. Hannity. For the very first time since getting fired by ABC over what was, well, in her own words, a tweet that is indefensible. Roseanne Barr sits down with us for a one-on-one -on -one interview in studio. Just happened about an hour and a half ago. Now, we were supposed to air tonight an interview with the Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. He announced today he's running for Speaker of the House. That interview will now air tomorrow. And plus, breaking news right now, reports tonight that a U.S. military plane is en route to North Korea to pick up the remains of some U.S. servicemen that were killed during the Korean War as was promised and part of the agreement in Singapore. We'll keep you updated on that story. But tonight, our interview with Roseanne. Now, we will warn some of you, some parts of the sit-down are controversial. Some of you will find it offensive. Consider that your viewer warning. Now, after starting her career as a stand-up comedian, Roseanne Barr became a household name. For nine years, 1988 to 1997, she starred in her very own sitcom, a huge hit on ABC. Now, she won an Emmy, a, global, a Golden Globe, and multiple other awards before Roseanne wrapped up after nine iconic seasons. But, well, year after year, wherever Roseanne Barr went, controversy, in fact, followed. 1990, she was booed off the field. She sang, quote, well, maybe screeched is a better word, the national anthem. She grabbed her crotch. She spit in a rendition of the national anthem. That was at a Padres game. We'll talk about that. In 2009, she posed as a cookie-baking Nazi for satirical Jewish magazine. She once told Joy Behar that Sarah Palin was a slave to right-wing men. On her blog, she compared all Republicans to even pedophiles. She talks about her political transformation tonight. She also floated the idea that practicing Catholics, which I was raised Catholic, should lose custody of their kids. 2012, she actually ran for president. She lost to Jill Stein in the Green Party primary. But earlier this year, after some time away from the spotlight, Roseanne Barr made a huge comeback. A few months ago, she spearheaded the reboot of the hit show that bears her name. The new Roseanne debuted with massive ratings as Barr played a Trump-supporting, politically incorrect family matriarch. And however, only after a few episodes, the show was canceled after she tweeted this about former Obama advisor Valerie Jarrett, quote, you can see it right there, Muslim Brotherhood, Planet of the Apes, had a baby, VJ. Valerie Jarrett is an African-American woman. She was born in Iran. Now, Roseanne rightfully apologized many times Damage was done. The Roseanne reboot was canceled within hours of that tweet. Recently on her YouTube page, Roseanne had this to say about her tweet, which we'll ask her about, and the controversy that followed. Take a look. I'm trying to talk about Iran. I'm trying to talk about Valerie Jarrett wrote the Iran deal. I know, but you've told me this 300 times. Do you know that if... That's you... what my tweet was about. I know. You've explained this literally 300 times. I thought the was white! So such a short time ago, I sat down with Roseanne for her first, very first national TV interview since her show was canceled. We begin with part one. All right, joining us now, she really needs no introduction. Roseanne Barr is with us. Roseanne, thanks for coming. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Sean. All right. You um, sent this tweet out. Yeah. It... Actually, I was hacked. No, I'm kidding. You're kidding. <laughs> Uh, you, you haven't lost your sense of humor. You started out as a comedian. Well, I want to talk about your background and everything, but I want to get right to it. Muslim Brotherhood, Planet of the Apes, you're talking about Valerie Jarrett. Yeah. And obviously, you can't, what were you thinking when you said that? I know you said mm -hmm. people shouldn't defend you. Oh, I, I just didn't want to get into the whole game of it. <clears throat> that is a political tweet. And, um, you know, I, I've been on <clears throat> Twitter for a long time, and I'm always, uh, let's put it this way. I walked away in 2012 when I ran for president of the Socialist Party. And I, I saw for myself that it wasn't where my values were at, after all. And I began to read more and expand a little tiny bit of sanctioned news that I used to read. Instead, I, I started reading alternate opinions. I learned more, and so I corrected myself. Mm -hmm. And now I live, uh, and I told ABC this at the beginning, I'll, I'll, I will always defend Israel, because I'm a Jew, and I also have family that lives there. In Israel? Yeah. So I, that is a tweet about... Um, 
asking for accountability from the previous administration about the Iran deal, which Valerie Jarrett is the author of. And that was what was in my head. Okay, let's go back to you do understand. Now I do. <laughs> Did you not understand when you tweeted it out? No, I was so shocked well, that well, they. Let me ask you, what do you understand? Well, I don't understand a lot, to tell you the truth. The first thing was shock that they were saying it was racial when it's political. And I, that was a hard one to take. And then uh, everybody started saying I was a racist, which is like the worst thing that you can call a Jewish person, especially one who, like me, grew up with Holocaust survivors. And at age three, because of that fact, I took a vow to my God that I would always fight uh, extremism on either side, right or left. And for a long time, I thought I was fighting it on the right by being really left. And then I just slowly woke up and saw that both extremes are not where my values are. My values are in the middle. And I, I uh, believe that we have the right to uh, ask for accountability for where our tax money goes. And when I ran for president in 2012, I, I ran as the um, representative of the Black Caucus of the Green Party. And they trusted me so much to black people chose me. And I was humbled by that. And I ran on uh, an anti-racist, uh, you know, Clinton's drug wars and what that means that one in every four uh, African-American males are in prison for pot. And I, I'm very informed. I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I've always been political. My comedy is political. Do you <clears> see <throat> now? Yeah. What, in other words, what I guess I'm trying to ascertain, Roseanne, is that the reaction was universal. Well, it seemed that way. And, well, in many ways it was. What do you see about it now? I mean, in other words, uh, I know you tweeted out apologies. Yeah, this I is did. an opportunity to really talk um, to people. Well, I've apologized a lot. It's been two months, and I've, I feel that I have apologized and um, explained and uh, asked for forgiveness and made recompense. Those are the, that's part of my religion. You said that the uh, Rabbi Shmuley. Yeah, because there's four parts of uh, being forgiven in order to come back into your own good graces. And I was uh, so sad that people thought it was racist. And then I went into the whole thing about the whole discussion of racism, and that blew my mind because it's so much a part of what the show I was doing was about. And I'm like, why can they not see my work? And, uh, and then I got really messed up thinking, in this world, it seems as if words matter more than actions. But in the real life world, actions matter more than words. And my actions over 30 years as an artist and a, and a comedian, I've always been against the abuse of power towards all marginalized groups. But now I feel like both the left and the right have marginalized the middle. And it's just too crazy. And uh, the thing that broke my heart the most, I have to say this, is that I have African American children in my family and in my loved circle. In your immediate family? Yeah, and in my loving circle and Asians too and Hispanic people and, and Jews get around, let's put it like that. But uh, I felt so bad for those kids because I love them and I didn't want them to think of me like that, you know. And, and I know, and I was so sad, and I'm so sad that anyone thinks that of me, but I'm not that person. And I was going through a lot of, a very hard time, you know. <clears throat> How would you like it to be sitting in a room with 25 people who think Trump is the worst thing that's ever happened to the United States? How would you like it? Could you do your job? It happens to me every day. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. There are a lot of people that don't like what I have to say. In your circle? Oh, I, I, I don't know if you read a lot about Sean Hannity, but this, this isn't I do, me. but... 
um, here's what I really... People that work on your show are like that? There's plenty of people around here that disagree with every word I say and hate what I stand for. Absolutely. Disagree adamant with me, adamantly with me. But, you know, I signed up. I give strong opinions. And some people disagree, but I have no problem with people disagreeing. Here's what I, really, I don't either, but don't that's what that's what upset me so badly because I like to hear all sides. That's how I form a story. Oh, you! I have a whole list of stuff you said about Republicans and Catholics, of which you know both. I've but, said uh, it about everybody. Listen, mm -hmm. I I hate everyone equally. <laughs> but <laughs> no, obviously, kidding. you're kidding. No, but, but everybody deserves to be joked about. Here's what I want. Anybody to get to the who's in any kind of position of power deserves to have a joke about them. And if right. they can't laugh at themselves, then that means something. If you can't laugh at yourself first before you start laughing at everybody else, that means Isn't something. Isn't that how you started your career? By yeah. the domestic goddess? Yeah. And you poke a lot of fun at yourself? I tell more jokes about myself than I do anybody else. Because to me, comedy is very personal. That's what makes it funny. That's what made people like The Roseanne Show, because they saw themselves in or had an aunt or you know, their mom or their sister, somebody in their family was, you know, a loud, outspoken woman who loved her family. And that was what I was so excited about to come back to television was to show that that family is also also multiracial and lives next door to Muslims whose ideas they don't agree with. That was what I brought to television and what kicked everybody's ass in the ratings. And they should be so lucky that they'll ever get anywhere near that. And they can't take that away from me no matter what's happened. I guess this is an opportunity. There are a lot of people, Roseanne, that are not on social media. Yeah. Maybe haven't read your apologies. Yeah, they're smart. I can put, well, they're probably, are you off now Twitter forever? Well, my kids took it away from me forever. Um, well, you could always get another phone. But here's, the, I think, a very important I did. Thing. For, for those people, though, that, and I'll put up some of the apologies here that you have tweeted out, but. There are still a lot of people that look at that comment and they think that you, they cannot believe that you didn't know better. Yeah, I know, but I did. But I want you to address that. Address those people. Um, you know, I made a mistake, obviously. It cost me everything. My life's work, everything. I made a mistake and I've paid the price for it. Uh, but no, I did not know she was like a lot of Americans, including a lot of uh, people of all types, they didn't know either. You mean, I mean, I've read that you said that, that you didn't, and you had this crazy video this week. What was, what, what oh, was Oh, I that? was so mad. Well, I was filming this thing to, uh, <clears throat> you know, my real apology, which followed it. But I just, everybody was like, well, you're not addressing this correctly. And so I just lost it and everybody started laughing. So I go, ah, put it up there. All right. Because it's a joke. Gallery, uh, Valerie Jarrett. Yeah, she's watching now. Oh, well, she said she wouldn't watch. She said she on wouldn't, the view but, but she'll hear about it. So yeah. My question is, I want you to address her, because she was, and and maybe not just her, but maybe people in the community that are so outraged, outraged uh -huh. about it. I want you to address them All right. from your heart and tell them. Um, here's what I have to say. Let's talk about it. Let's really turn this into a teachable moment. We need to talk about race and uh, all everything that's uh, connected to it, including not knowing that someone who looks like me, her skin tone is like mine, and I'm brown. Uh, I didn't know she was African American. I, I, I assume because she was, uh, you know, from Iran and lived in Iran for such a long time and writes about how she she and Barack Obama hung out for a long time and the reason they were so tight and such friends is because they they don't like the idea of American exceptionalism they like that you know every country has its own culture and we should respect them and this and that and okay that's kind of a globalist way of thinking. But I'm like, I can talk to people like that. But I don't think a state that kills gays and, you know, 
Stone's Talking rape victims, yeah, and is a brutal, where people don't even have drinking water, and they have no rights, women have no rights. I don't think that is like America. America's not like that. America is a place where I, a loudmouth, old, gorgeous Jewish woman comedian, am allowed freedom of speech. Is this the freedom of speech you wanted to use? It's, it's, uh, I, well, of course, I look back and go, come on, Sean, get real. I mean, it cost me everything. No, I wish I had worded it better. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to let them tell me what I meant. And that's what makes me so mad, because I know myself and I will speak for myself. And I won't have, you know, any people who don't share my culture tell me what I meant. And, you know, they've called me racists on the left for a long time. Ever since I said the Jewish people have a right to live in their ancestral homeland, that's racism to them, to the to the far left, of which I used to be one of. But I don't want to be one of few. I want to be one of many because I like the whole thing about America that this is where we have a melting pot and we speak to each other. And we unite and we get common things such as where in the hell did our tax money go? I mean, where did it go? Mm -hmm. And how can a president just ship pallets of cash to another country without that going through Congress? You didn't say this in the beginning. You didn't say this was about Iran. I did, too. I'm on there every damn day talking about Iran no, but, for I mean, 10 years. This particular uh, comment about... Well, are you going to take one comment out of a conversation? I'm not arguing with you. I'm trying to give no, you No, I'm just saying, but that is what they did. And this was a continuing conversation about the rights of uh, people in Iran to throw off their overlords. I guess what I'm listening to you is, like I, I said, talk, if you talk to Valerie Jarrett directly. I would say this, Valerie, let's discuss this. Don't assume that you know what I meant, because I think you don't know what I meant, and I would like to make it clearer to you what I did meant, mean. And I would like to find a way past all that to really discuss the issue at hand and to try to find common ground between us. Would you want to say sorry to her directly? Would you like to talk? Well, to her? I have already. Have you talked to her? You haven't talked no, to her? No, I haven't called her because I was like thinking what would, would be you the like right to? thing to say to call her? Yeah. You think she, I'm afraid she'd start screaming and throw the phone down. Well, if you pick, if I, if I had her number and I handed the phone to you right now, what was the first thing you'd say to her? Well, do you? If, you want to do it? No, I'm, I'm asking because maybe... I'll call her if anybody's got her Anyone number. Anyone got her number? No, nobody. But if you did, call her. This is, And I think it's the important thing. You're saying you want to talk about issues, and this is a bigger pe picture to teach teachable yeah, moment. It, it well, is I, a I would teachable think the first moment. thing you'd want to do, if it was me, I would want to say, I, am, I want her to hear my voice say, I am so sorry. And I know you've tweeted it, and I know you said it, but now that you have a very different perspective on the comments, I would yeah. assume you'd want to start there. Well, I already have said I'm sorry for two months. No, I, I know that, but you'd want to say it directly to her is what I'm asking. Oh, yeah. If she was on the phone or something, you mean? No. Yeah, well, she's not. But if she's watching, I'm so sorry that you thought I was racist and that you thought that my um, tweet was racist because it wasn't. It was political. And um, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding that caused my ill-worded tweet and uh you know i uh i'm sorry that you feel harmed and hurt and I, I never meant that and and for that i apologize i i never meant to hurt anybody or say anything negative about a, an entire race of people which i think 30 years of my work can attest to. Let me go beyond that and just talk about... Um... And plus, I tell her, she's got to get a new haircut. I mean, seriously, she, she needs a new haircut. Uh, people say that about me all the time, so I'm I would imagine you'd say that about me. Um, yeah, there, yeah, I would. Think so? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, anything particular you want? Because I think your want? part, it, it needs to go over more towards this side. The so part the seems side? like it's oh. in the middle too much. Let me ask this. This also impacted, and I know that you, you tweeted out, there yeah. was the whole, this was the biggest, I actually have the numbers, I think after they watch with DVR viewing, mm -hmm. 27 million people. 
I mean, this, this is not... Yeah, a, and I, of course, I want to apologize to all of them, too, and say, um, you know, you've heard my explanation the first part of this show, and uh, I hope you'll try to understand me and uh, accept my apologies for the part in this big misunderstanding. Let me ask you, you also did it at like 2.30 in the morning? Yeah. You were on Ambien? Yeah. Were you drinking? Yeah, I told you that. It was okay. Memorial Day. I had two beers. Just two? Yeah. Okay. Do you I take Ambien drink. a lot? I can't drink. Do you take Ambien? Two amb beers. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a whole other... Thing. There was a whole lot of other physical things going on in my life, too. Now, do you want me to talk about that? Well, I've actually... You know, I actually have I've read it right a lot here. about. Yeah, I just saw what you did. Okay, <laughs> I've read a lot about you, and it's actually I didn't know all of this. Oh, you have said in the past. You said once to Larry King that you suffer from multiple personality disorder. Well, I don't suffer from it anymore. You don't. I enjoy it. You enjoy multiple personality. Now. Okay, um, and you said that. Well, you just do crazy things, and you don't really know you do or don't want to do. Well, that's, that's what happened in your life. No, or? well, I guess it does if you're drunk. You called it. Uh, do you get drunk a lot? Do you have no a, a substance? No, use? I no. no I you wouldn't. also once uh, you I'd said. I'd love to develop it though. An, you love to develop I like an alcoholic. Drinking. You yeah. like drinking. You wish you could drink. You just said <laughs> yeah. you can't drink. I know. I have no uh, well, tolerance. I take three kinds of antidepressants every day. Uh, yeah. No, you two do. kinds now. Two kinds. One's a blood pressure pill, so that's three. Okay. I take an antidepressant mm -hmm. and a blood pressure pill, and then I take some more antidepressants. Then I read in the Seattle Times when you were out promoting your book, this is in 1994, your father abused you sexually. Well, that I'm Your not mother sure. psychologically, that you would cover yourself in ketchup, lie on the floor, play dead until little Roseanne cried because of allegations your parents would deny they No, that's great. wrong. I put the true? ketchup on laid on the floor for a joke for when my mom came in and she'd think I was dead. How old were you when you were sexually abused? Um, well, now I have a whole different view of that. You don't think you were sexually abused? Um, I think I was emotionally abused. and um, You said your mother's psychological, your father's sexual. Yeah, everybody in my whole family's messed up. Do you, do you think you, you really, serious question, because you've said in multiple interviews that you had multiple personality disorder. Yeah. So I guess the question then is, do you think that any of this plays into, like, I, I have some, you've had crazy moments. Let's just be honest. We'll call it what it well, is. Well, you shouldn't call a mental no, no. health patient crazy. Okay, you've had some very In fact, that's one funny thing that Tom Arnold said, never call a crazy person crazy. Crazy, oh. <laughs> Um, and that's an interesting. But I have story. mental health issues. Yeah. How how are you? How are I you, had? How issues. bad have this gotten for you with that? Terrible. How bad? Tell people. As bad as it gets. You ever institutionalized? Honey, that's like going to the beach for me. It's, seriously, you've I've had... been uh, hospitalized a lot. Yeah, several times. Yes. Do you think, in, in a lot of ways, I've, I've, I love comedians. I've watched mm -hmm. everyone from Richard Pryor. I've watched Chris Rock. I watch every stand-up comedian. I've I watched you and everybody. And it seems, and I might be way off base saying this, and if I am, tell me, that the creative You're genius... You're way off base. Thank you. No, okay. The creative genius for comedians, it's like their blessing is their curse. It's like well, they it's have this very ability close. to be funny, but... The and being a creative genius. No, I'm serious. No, but I know I am. But anyway, <laughs> no, but I am. So you're a domestic goddess. Yeah. Understood. That part of your psyche or brain is really close to the madness. They're very close. When we come back, Roseanne opens up very emotionally, honestly, about her struggles with mental illness and more about this controversy as we continue. more of my exclusive interview with Roseanne Barr. Do you think there are other people inside you with multiple personalities mm -hmm. that actually speak and you don't even recognize it? No, not anymore. I, I'm fully How long integrated. Is that? You're fully integrated? I fully integrated and I was uh, fully integrated at Stanford 
university about 12 years ago. Was it, was it a medicine that transformed your life? No, it's therapy. Therapy? Like 20 years of it. You, you Look, you've had a lot of controversy. I've done the work, though. I just have to pat myself on the back there. I wanted to get better. And this all happened to me when I was pregnant with my son. He's 23, going to graduate from college, very proud. But when I was pregnant with him, first I got pregnant. First they implanted six eggs, and four of them took. And I was like, oh, my God, I was at Planet Hollywood, and I told Bruce Willis, oh, my God, I'm having, qu I'm having quadruplets. Right. Beat that for a headline, <laughs> And I was so excited. But then I started to lose them, you know, and, and they put me in this thing where you, I absorbed them, my body absorbed, and there was only one egg left there, and it was kind of hanging. It didn't know whether to come or go. So they did me on this biofeedback deal where I'd say, I want you to stay into this machine. It was, and it- Did it work? Yeah, it worked, but the deep spiritual thing of that, it started to heal all the parts of me that were crazy and out of control. I noticed that- Because I learned to focus and I learned to meditate and that helped me a lot with therapy you were very and medication. And medication and you said, to, and you really embraced and your And I had a Jewish great faith. strength. Well, I've always been very religious since I was a little girl. Like, uh, did I say this? That I grew up in a apartment building full of Holocaust survivors and every Friday they would come over to my grandma's apartment. My, my grandparents owned a, an apartment building they brought uh, 50 or so survivors from the camps, and that's where I grew up. And every Friday, we, they'd all come you to You had my, family that was in Auschwitz, and they had tattoos. Yeah, they all had tattoos. And they would say terrible things to me when I, I was only three, and they would tell me the things. And, I mean, it wasn't too, it was too much for my mind to handle. And uh, then they would make me watch the Eichmann trials when I was only three. They go, she needs to know it was little girls like her that they did this. Is it on TV? Yeah, the Eichmann trial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that split me emotionally, deeply. It was a horror to me, and it still is a horror to me. A lot of evil in the world. Yeah, but there's so much love. That's what I was gonna tell you, Sean, but you were going through all this trash. I didn't even Let get to tell anything. What, mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, but no, no, I'm gonna no, tell ahead. you. I want, I want no, you to I tell you a story. Sean. I wanna, You've been a good I wanna, friend. I want to I wanna you to tell your story. I'm gonna Listen, tell I'll my tell you story how you like got this. on this when show. When I go outside now, mm. I was so scared to go outside because I'm like, oh, everyone thinks I'm a racist. You know, and I live on an island where it's all brown people. I'm like, oh, hell, you know. My daughter says every day people come in and they're like, we, we know who your mom is and all these things like that. And I would go out on the street and people just r rush up to me to tell me they love me and they don't think, you know, what happened was uh, balanced to the other people that do worse things and say mean, really mean things that aren't political but are just mean. And... Uh, I'll tell you, I, it blew my mind because I'm like, man, I got more. I've never felt this kind of love from people. It has been overwhelming. It's just, I just thank them. I tell them, you know, if it wasn't for my fans, I probably wouldn't even be walking around. It was just devastating. To be misunderstood is the worst thing. And I want to sing that song. Oh, Lord, please don't let sing, me sing, be miss. I want to sing that because now I have a band. I've always wanted to sing. I saw you sing the national anthem. It wasn't Shut good. up. That wasn't good. That was not good. Did you see my follow-up, though? I bet you didn't because you're in the news. Oh, but I did a follow-up, Beat the host Sean. up. Uh, I followed up that. You grabbed your crotch and spit. Well, that's what the stupid pitcher told me to do. Oh, and they so all are... These are like rats off a ship. Yeah. But I was trying to di make him laugh. He said, that'd be so funny. I go, okay, I'll do it. Right. So I did it. And it wasn't funny. And I learned a lesson. Never take comedy advice from a pitcher. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you really, it's important to you. And I remember when I first I want people you. to like me. I, I don't want them to hate me. I, I like them. You wanted people. This is what you said to me. You said, 
this is not me. You said what you said. The exact word you said. It's not, not me. Not, not the said, picture Then you said to me, you said, I want people to know who I really am. That's what you said to me. I know. So here is, you know, there's going to be a lot of people watching because you're here tonight. Tell those people who you are. Well, I'm a creative genius. And this is, this is not a good feeling for an artist to be treated this way. And it's not a good feeling for a citizen either. And uh, here's who I am. I'm somebody who cares about civil rights. You, I reject what you call me. You call me racist. I don't accept it. I know who I am. And uh, I'm not a racist. And the people who voted for Trump, they're not racist either. And Trump isn't a racist. Sorry. But, you know, we just have a different opinion. We all want the same thing, though. We want people in the inner cities that are living in feces. And I'm talking about my son goes to school in San Francisco. I go up there. I don't just blab and run my mouth. I live my beliefs. I want people to know that. I live my beliefs. I try. And, of course, I fail. But I try. And I get back up and try again. I, didn't, I don't want to interrupt you every second, because I want you to <laughs> speak in your own words. But you, but, but yeah, it, it, listen, PC is sickening. It is. It's but not American. You, and you I, said, I started You said I live around brown people. Like, for example, would you not say, why not say African-American people? Or I live around African-American people, too. Yeah. I, mean, I, I live in a real neighborhood. I don't live behind gates with bodyguards. I live in a real neighborhood of working people. I chose to do that. I, you know, I was going to ask you about all these other past controversies, it. but you know what? I've made a lot of mistakes. I live my gonna... life out loud. Uh, you know, um, I do it. When things are going too far right, I'm going to go a little left. And when things are going too far left, I'm going to go a little right. Because I like balance in the middle. I like middle America. I like the middle way. I like the middle class. I like the middle opinion. That And more of my exclusive interview with Roseanne Barr. Look at you, and I look at your success. I mean, nine years as, you know, a top hit show, and then to come back in this environment where there's later. cable and Hulu and Netflix and, and everything else in that environment, and you get this massive audience. And tell the story when this all went down with ABC. Which story? Which part? What did it, when, when they first called you, they had asked you, first of all, to... Get rid of your Twitter account. Yeah, but listen. I said to him in the beginning, I'm never going to stop defending Israel and the Jewish people. Right. Because that's me. I was raised that way. And that's right. how I learned. And it's very important to me. It's central to my life. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. said, OK. So anyway, this whole I did what I did. And then they called me and um, they said, what possible excuse can you have for this? unforgivable and egregious tweet and I said I what do you mean exactly you didn't know no you could knock me over feather when they said she was African-American my boyfriend saw it I was like what <laughs> I thought I thought she was Middle Eastern anyway well because you know but is it wrong to say everyone's any comparison to I compared to what people they've lied about my tweet from day one. Yeah. They said she says she looks like I never use the words looks like you don't use politically correct terms like I heard you no. earlier in this. Um, I'm not going to either because it's sickening. What do you want now that ABC has gotten rid of it and America's going to hear you tonight? Uh huh. What is the future for Roseanne Barr? What do you want to have happen? For example, ABC is now kick-starting basically yeah. the Roseanne Barr show. Well, I walked and away from it that show. I just want to tell you this. Yeah. I walked away from that show despite the fact that I had a contract which protected me from if I got in trouble with tweets. Mm -hmm. It said that in your contract? Yes. And they didn't pay you? Well, we can't talk about that, but I was, I was allowed under my contract to have 24 hours to correct any mistake. And I asked them to let me go on The View and their other shows and explain and mm -hmm. correct that I didn't say what they were putting out there. And, you know, they said, no, you can't till the contract's ready. And that took weeks. Right. But anyway, I walked away. You felt bad about your staff. I did see that. I wanted, I didn't want to cause anybody to lose their jobs. I'm, I'm for working people. 
And that one really stuck. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm not, I could fight this because they didn't give me the notice or the chance to correct. But I'm like, no, it's going to be part of the repentance. I'm going to just walk away. I want to ask you about that. You signed off on this reboot without you. What is it called? The, the Connors? Uh-huh. I think. Did you have to sign off on that to allow the people to work? Yes. You did? Yes. You were glad to do it? Well, I thought it was part of the, you know, what was put before me to do. And you also... I think God gives, I always, what God puts before me, I do. I, I don't anymore try to argue or win. I just do what's in front of me. Part of this to you is you said you want to make amends towards, I think it's re recompense. Yeah, you, you have to that's give That's part money. of your faith. So recompense to you over the money this is, is the what? action you take in the physical world to Explain make something that, though. better. Recompense in this case is what? Well, I can't say that because it's secret. You're not supposed to tell people what you do. Just give us a hint. <laughs> well, I guess so people know. I think people should know. Well, I told Shmuley, but you know, I, I. Gave to several things, African-American things, yeah, which I do anyway, but I gave a little bit more, and uh, colleges, and... Uh, to help people. Yeah, because I've helped a lot of people go to college, and they can't get a damn job, and they're in debt, so they, they're they not really grateful for me <laughs> to do that, but um, I also have... a. You know, I, I wanted to go to the poorest place in America and see how I could help there. Because, you know, the poorest place in America, the poorest place in the richest country on earth, let's put it that way. And I have four years um, tried to help families there. And, and that's Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and Rosebud Indian Reservation. And I kind of have... You know, I just expand my family, and when I love people, I take them in as, you know, I include them in my circle, because family's not just about blood, it's about soul, you know? I still don't understand, did you uh, adopt African-American children in your family? You said you have in your family. Oh, no, I, I do. I have uh, a dear friend whose uh, son is my godson, and, and they're African-American, and... Uh, Man, it was hard, you know. He called me right away. What did he say? He said, I love you no matter what you do. And I was like, but man, I need to be understood here. Because I never, who, I mean, it's, I just have to say this. If you think, if people think, I'm saying it to them, if you really think that at the height of my power and my fame, I would go, black people look like, I mean, it's just, I wouldn't do, I mean, I'm not stupid. And uh, that's what they keep selling. And now they don't even, after they misquoted the treat, tweet for weeks, now they don't even include it and they just go, Roseanne's racist tweet. And they just keep shoving it down everybody's throat. I love all people, let's say that. I love everybody. I include everybody in my circle. I put my money where my mouth is because I'm not a racist. And uh, I decided that this was going to move me to do my own interviews on my own YouTube channel. And on there, I, I'm doing serious subjects and talking to interesting people who I don't 100% agree with. But we find common ground. And I think that's what America needs. And that's what I was trying to do on my show. A lot more with Roseanne Barr straight ahead as we continue. As we continue, more with Roseanne Barr. Would you like to get back in TV, sitcom? Would you, would Only if there's nudity. <laughs> and you're going to be the, the nude person yeah. on the show? But so far they refuse. So far they refuse. I don't know if you get that on a network show anyway, but I think on YouTube you can do whatever you want. I just like talking to people and discussing, what do you all think of this? What should we do? How can we make this better? You obviously cared enough because you ran for president yeah. twice, right? I mean, yeah. And obviously, you care a lot about these issues, but you, you're right. Your politics have changed dramatically. Yeah. And 
Because I, I read think... more. Like what changed you? What 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 books? What what shifted your political views? Well, my experience in the Green Party and in socialist parties, I just felt very marginalized there and that I didn't belong because they don't like Israel. And I was like, what? This is the worst place on earth? I've been there. Have you been there? Oh, yeah, many times. It's, not, it's a wonderful place. I think I'm the biggest place. supporter of Israel on television. No, you are. Yeah. But it's a wonderful place with problems like every place else. I put a lot of thinking into solution. I used to say, I, I do a lot of drinking, I mean thinking, <laughs> and uh, I have a solution for it. And uh, it is, I, I've always been saying this for like 20 years. I, I think that if grandmothers, from Arab grandmothers, Jewish grandmothers, Drew's grandmothers, everyone who lives over there, grandmas, if we could get together and write up a grandma's treaty and then present it to power, I think that'd be the fastest way to solving problems because there's no children, there's no child on this earth that should go to sleep in fear and danger. And hungry. We have enough money to we fix food it. Too. We, we have, do. Yeah. We have enough everything. I agree. Except love. So I, I, I'm, I'm a. Well, there's still, a lot of evil in the world. You kind of rejected that earlier, but well, I. Well, I wrote a, a whole evil. book about that evil. I'll send it too. to you. I know you did. Deliver us from evil. Because well, mine was what. That you know how people always say, "Get rid of your hate. Get rid of your hate." But you're supposed to hate evil. You know, I have an idea, and I'm just going to throw it out at you as I listen to you. Um, I think you uh, obviously very sincere in saying, "I want to have a conversation. We need to." And I think the country's never been this divided. And it's stupid because we got to get our money back from both sides. Yeah, we, we have to talk to We're each other. It. Yeah. You should go, you know, Roseanne and Friends show. And what you should do is just stand up. Yeah, I want to do And that. then invite a guest and have a real conversation. I think that would sell out in theaters all around the country. And I think it would be good and invite Valerie Jarrett to go with you. I would do that because we could turn this into a really great teachable moment where there's a lot of synthesis because that's why you have conversation so that you can synthesize your ideas and come up with a solution. And I'm tired of no solutions, Sean. That's why I like Trump because I think he's a solution. We person. have a lot of the country has gotten dramatically better. And I actually said on the air, I think if he cured cancer. Yeah. At this point, and gave every American thirty million dollars, they'd be they'd still hate him. Um, but I, I think they're coming around. His yeah. stuff's going up. His approvals. You seem to have had a really tough, brutal life. I haven't asked you about Tom Arnold yet. You still Ooh. love him in a lot of ways, or no? Huh? Do I? Did you say do I still love him? Apparently not. Oh, but, what? Yeah. Um, did he call you? No. Hell's no. No, that's. That's 25 years ago. Oh, I know, That's two husbands ago, Sean. I'm sorry. <laughs> How many total? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not keeping up. I'm on my fourth one. This one's my longest one, 16 years. Yeah. This, it's going I don't well. know why he still likes me, but he does. I heard he, got, he caught you smoking. And you, well, you he didn't opened know. the How did you hide it? Well, because I wore the <laughs> rubber gloves and a hat, and I'd go out in the alley, you know, and then I... And he didn't know. He didn't smell it. I, I'd be wiping Perfume. wild rosebuds on me. And no, he didn't know, and I lied. And so on top of all this other stuff, yeah. so he opens up the Yahoo, and there I am smoking in my mom's alley. Mm. And he came in, he goes, because he knew, you know, that I'd kill him if he made me mad. Me he you, goes, sweetheart. Yeah, you lied. You lied to me Ouch. about smoking, didn't you? What'd you say? Get out of it! Here's the question I have. In all my years on television, there have been controversies. Yes. Recently, Samantha B. she still has her show. Yeah. When Bill Maher got fired at uh, ABC, I said, I'm not in favor of boycotts. I think people, when they make mistakes, have a right. People, I think the American people are fair. I do too. The American people are good. Forget the media. Forget the people that write stuff. I don't care. I think that's they why they turned into my show 28 million. Yeah. Because they wanted to see something balanced for once. Yeah. Every other show, it's like 24 7 hating on Trump. And I call it hatriotism. That's not going to help nothing. Mm. 
people want to hear the balance, so they want to hear the truth. And anything that isn't based on facts and data and is pure emotion, that ain't right. So would you? So you're going to do stand up? Maybe you can add to your stand up a uh, serious I like that part idea. of it, right? Do do your stand up, then you sit down and have a conversation with somebody maybe you disagree with. Sean, I got to tell you one thing before mm. you kick me out of here. I'm not kicking you out. You can stay as long as you want. I really appreciate you being such a good friend to me through when I was hiding in my mom's basement. I remember. And I found cigarette butts from when I was 13, and oh. I used to smoke. And they were damn good smoking. You smoked them again all <laughs> no. these years later? Yeah, oh. they were good. I remember when cigarettes were 50 cents a pack. That's how old I am. No, they were 27. Okay, you're much older than me then. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I thank you for the friendship, and you helped me through it a lot. I and will, so did a lot of other people I out wanted there. people. I just thank you so much for walking with me when I was, like, in a, in a real down place. Thank you. More after this. Tomorrow, 930, GDP numbers for second quarter. Big news, hopefully. Congressman Jim Jordan announced he's going to run for speaker. We'll always be fair and balanced. Laura Ingraham standing by. And take it away. How are you? Hannity, thanks so much. Fascinating hour with Roseanne. I got to watch you. the last half. I only saw the first half because I had to work for the second half. Well, why didn't you but watch I'm, the second half? What's up I'm going to watch it tonight when I get back. <laughs> but it was wild from beginning to end. So good right, job. Thanks. That's like dealing with like a feral, you know, you know, some kind of feral right. wild deal. That was cool. All right. So